Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the New Jersey Titans Coaches Corner. My name is Tom Wilms, and I'm joined by the head coach and the GM of the Titans, Craig Doremus. Craig, thanks so much for taking the time. I know it's a real big, busy week for you. No, Tom, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, we'll start off with opening night. Tough evening in a lot of ways. On the scoreboard, a 5 nothing decision. It was scoreless after one, but there was an intensity from the beginning, wasn't there? Yeah, absolutely. I, to be honest with you, you know, as we reflected back on the game and went back, uh, I don't think we played nearly as poorly as the scoreboard indicates. I think the game did get away from us in the third period. Um, however, I thought our compete and um, execution was really good through the first 37, 38 minutes of that game. We were happy with it. A um, couple chances early on to find the back of the net, and, and we didn't. And ultimately, uh, we ended up paying for that at the end. But I think if one of those finds the back of the net, it's probably a completely different game. Um, however, good step for us learning-wise, I think, for a lot of the guys' first game in the North American League. So, uh a lot of guys took it in, um, reflected on their themselves, and, and made some adjustments as we went into Saturday. I uh, kind of said that. Uh, good, uh, good job for the first uh, 38, 39 minutes because it stayed scoreless until you got a game of two goals, 39 seconds left in the second period. Now, it's broadcasters use it. Um, other people say it. It's always very cliche to say that uh, giving up goals at the end of the period is uh, really kind of a dagger. In your experience, do you really find that to be the case, or are we just kind of a uh, broadcaster talk there? <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's spot on, and I think, you know, to add to the cliche is the shift after a goal for a goal against are always important as well. And for us, it was uh, not being able to uh, link together a positive shift after the goal that ultimately was the, the doom of us. Um, you know, so much to the point where we've made it, you know, one of our team goals this year, uh, you know, is centered around our ability to att attack and defend in the first and last three minutes of each period. So we know it's critical to our success as a hockey team. Uh, and for us, what a growing point and lesson on night one that it comes back to bite us in the butt. Uh, I guess some cliches are absolutely true, I suppose. Uh, so we'll move forward to Saturday. A great 4-3 to three overtime victory. Jack Carlson, Tommy Bannister, Jake LaRusso all scoring during, uh, during play. And then Brandon Abizov, the NA, the NA3 grad, picking up the game winner, his first NA goal. Great contributions from, again, the vets and the rookies. Yeah, uh, I think there were so many good things that went on there. I think Ben Charette's goaltending probably gets overshadowed a bit. Um, but I thought Ben played very, very solid for us uh, and gave us a chance to win there. I think for us, the, another part of the game that probably goes unnoticed now with the result was the fact that we had a lead, gave it up in the third, and then we're able to come back. And I think for a, a relatively young, inexperienced team in terms of North American League, uh, what an important part for us to be able to dig out heels there and respond back. And um, as the game went on and developed, I, I, I did sit back as a coach a bit, and I want to see some leadership evolve on the bench and see the direction of the guys. And, and I couldn't be more pleased with their stick to uh, and their poise throughout, you know, that, that rocky momentum in the third period there where I think in years past, maybe this early in the year, the game gets away from us, but we're really able to collect ourselves. We leaned on the experience from Friday night. And we responded the right way and we're able to knot the game back up. And then, like you said, um, Brandon makes a, a really nice play off a great pass from Carly in the overtime period there. And again, talk about stick to it this, gets stopped on the initial breakaway and then is able to retrieve that secondary puck and finish it. Uh, and from Brandon, it was it was the culmination of what I thought was an extremely impressive North American League debut. Um, like you mentioned, he comes from uh, our own NA3 program. And I thought uh, his display and performance in game one, it's only one game, but nevertheless was a very strong one and, and encouraging for the future. Now, not having a preseason or rather preseason games, does that play, did that play any effect on the weekend, whether it be results or what you saw on the ice? I think it does. Um, I think it, it, I definitely think it showed and reflected so much so that uh, the first comment from my mouth to the team post game on Friday was that that, that game was my fault as the GM. Um, I needed to do a better job of giving those guys preseason competition. Um, and I probably ill-prepared us for, for a North American League competition, never mind versus a very good, well-coached Maryland team. So, um, you know, I, I want to take that one on my shoulders. That falls back on me. I don't think I did a great job having those guys ready to go. Um, but full credit to them for being able to turn around there in 24 hours and put together a, a way more Titan-like performance. You mentioned Ben Charette, 35 saves in his debut. Uh, what did you feel about his performance? That was so key. I just think Ben brings such a poise and calmness to his game. Um, it's funny, we've joked as a staff at times that we don't even know if he knows what he's doing out there or how well he's playing at times because he's so calm. Um, and I think that's when he's at his best is how quiet and calm the game sees and how slow it seems to him. Uh, and even so, he makes a really spectacular save there with his glove on the back post, and it's almost no big deal to him. 
I think Ben has been excellent here throughout, you know, both the main camp process, training camp, and obviously in his um, North American League debut. And, and we're hoping he just continues to grow and evolve as a, as a young man and as a, a young goaltender. Um, we couldn't be more pleased with his performance on Saturday and his debut. Now, we'll look forward to this coming week after a year's hiatus. It's a ret the return of the NHL showcase. You're going out to Blaine, Minnesota, four games in four days. That's got to be a massive challenge. We'll start it off with just the conditioning aspect of it. How do you prepare for a gauntlet like that? I don't think you can. I, I think anyone who says you can is probably lying. It's early in the year where guys are still getting their legs under them. Um, and I think to go out there and expect the same lineup to play at that needed pace and tempo and physicality is probably somewhat unrealistic. Um, I think you need depth in your lineup. You need depth in your roster and your bench. Uh, and you need guys to be able to contribute. And I think, you know, obviously, probably a little bit of luck and, and staying healthy and remaining fresh as well. But um, the maturity part of it is probably, like you said, take care of your bodies. Make sure your legs are fresh. Do what you got to do to recuperate day and night there. Make sure you're hydrated and you're eating and sleeping well. Uh, but you're going to need contributions up and down your lineup, no doubt. And, and that's from the forward group, the decor, your goaltenders, whoever it may be. Um, you know, the competition is so good and, and the margin of error is so fine, not fine um, that you need to make sure you're, you're physically and mentally prepared each and every day uh, or that four game um, showcase could quickly become four really, really long days for yourself. So um, we're excited. Um, we, we believe that we've done a lot of work here. We're, we're excited to get going and face some different competition as well. And uh, It'll be a really good barometer test for a hockey club early in the season. All four games, as you mentioned, against competition, you don't normally see outside the division. The New Amarillo uh, Wranglers, Chippewa Steel, Austin Bruins, and the Wichita Falls Warriors. So you haven't played these guys in, if any of them, ever, maybe in a couple of years. How do you prepare for them? I know you'd like to stay focused on what you guys do. But obviously, there is a little bit of advanced scouting. So what can you really do, especially so early in the season? Yeah, I think, you know, as a staff, we try our best to make sure we get at least one of our guys in the, in the ring to watch them live. Um, obviously, break down as much film as we can, whether it's from the current season or going back to past seasons. Uh, you know, and if the coaching staff sort of remained the same, kind of see what their tendencies are. And again, once the puck drops, you don't know what wrinkles are going to be out there. So you're going to have to be able to adjust in, in game. Um, I think, like you said, Ultimately, you do have to focus on what your team does and wants to achieve tactically in all three zones and in all facets of the game. Uh, but, yeah, you just do as much pre-scout as you can, whether it's, again, watching film, watching them live uh, the days prior to the games or even speaking to other coaches who may be a little bit more familiar with uh, what that club tries to achieve tactically up and down the sheet of ice. Well, finally, the game times. You'll have a night game, an evening game, and two afternoon games. And we all know that athletes can be creatures of habit. Does that – present you with any kind of a different test? Uh, yes, but I think that's part of the preparation that goes into this event, right? It's it's not something where you're throwing together your plans a week out. This is something that my staff and I have planned for for months, um, you know, both from a sleep, uh, team meal, bus trips, uh, hydration, all, all that. Those are all parts of the process that we've talked about and, and studied and gone back and forth both using our own opinions as hockey coaches and seeking the, the advice of our medical staff and trainers to make sure that we're giving the players the best ability to put their best foot forward. Uh, so you go with it there. And again, I think the, the unique part of it is everyone's under those same conditions. It's not like we're going to play a team on Friday that's playing their first or second game. Everyone will be at three and three at that point. So I think it somewhat levels the playing field. And, and you know, then you got to go out there and execute and perform to your best. So as we said, Titans will be heading to the showcase. Action starts Wednesday night at 8.15 with a matchup against the South Division's Amarillo Wranglers. You can catch all the action on Hockey TV. And by the way, don't forget, Titans home opener, October 1st against Maryland. Make sure you head to njtitansnehl.com for inf information on both season tickets and single game tickets. And we can't wait to have you uh, back, Craig, and can't wait to have the fans back in the building as well next month. So, Craig, thanks so much for taking the time and have a safe trip. And uh, best of luck this week. Well, appreciate it, Tom. Before I go, I just want to take the, the time here just before we close out. I want to thank uh, the, the, the fans and, and staff in Maryland for uh, their tribute to the 9-11 victims. For us, obviously, uh, being close to the situation with touches that I think the organization's hearts, Middletown's was affected with a lot of people being lost that day. And obviously myself as a native New Yorker. So just wanted to give a shout out to them for going above and beyond. And I thought the, the tribute they put together pregame was uh, very, very well done. And uh, it was definitely wasn't necessary for them to do it. I think they went above and beyond to really give 
a lot of thought and process into it. And uh, to have them as part of it with Stephen Willie carrying the flag, I thought it was first class. So just wanted to give them a lot of credit for doing that and uh, doing a really good job at it, Robin Remick and her staff. As a fellow native New Yorker, I have to definitely echo those sentiments. It was a very well done ceremony and Seth, very well appreciated. Again, Craig, thanks so much. And again, best of luck this week. Thanks, Tommy. I appreciate it. And uh, that's all for this edition of the New Jersey Titans Coaches Corner. My name is Tom Wilms, and we'll see you real soon.